Hey, wakey wakey eggs and bakey adventures. It's another beautiful day at Point Noir, home of the Point Noir podcast. I'm your host doing the most, Joey the Third, aka Kimono Jack. This is session 11 1 1 here at Point Noir, and we're stoked that you're here with us. Before I get into introducing our guest, I was thinking about the show and the comments and reviews and stuff we've gotten. And wow, there's nothing else out there that is bringing the quality of guests, the stories about adventure and culture and community and inspiration. Like, there's nothing else out there. So big up to y'all, the listeners, who find value in this and have shown so much love and support. Like, it's the coolest thing ever. We're super proud of what we do here at Point Noir. So thank you guys for being a part of the journey and being as quality a listener as we have guests, because our guests are dope as hell, if you haven't figured that out by now. So... That all being said, just wanted to put some positivity out there, you know, some additional positivity and gratitude. Thank you guys so much. And without further delay, let's introduce today's special guest. Joining us today on The Point, hailing from the Bronx, New York, is Mr. Anthony Rivera. But you can just call him Ant. In fact, follow him on Instagram at Ant, A-N-T underscore 619. If that name or if that handle sounds familiar, it's probably because you've seen one of his pretty influential Instagram account pages, either Millennials Abroad or the Melanin Travel Club or one of his other pages, because this guy knows his Instagrams inside and out. So it's really cool to sit down and talk with somebody who's seen so much about the travel space, but has just recently gotten started in his own journeys. And not only that, he has gone all in trying to figure out how to make the laptop lifestyle work and being a digital nomad so that he can work, earn money, and travel and see the world at the same time. It's super dope. I think he has an amazing perspective and some things that you can definitely learn from. So without further delay, grab a refreshing beverage of choice, sit back, and get ready for today's session. Welcome to Point Noir, Ant. How you doing, bro? I'm glad you can make it. Hey, how you doing, man? Dude, Thanks for I, having me. Dude, of course, dude. I know you just came off of a nice flight to, uh, where were you at again? Um, Medellin, man, Colombia. Medellin. I got to get my accent up, bro. I got the French stuff down on lock, <laughs> but when it comes to the Spanish and the other Romance languages, nah, you got me. So you were out there, and now you're in New York chilling, right? Yeah, in the Bronx, man. In my city, back home after uh, three years. Yeah, three, okay. three years. I'm finally back. Um, I was out in Orlando and definitely not my type of scene at all. Oh, yeah? What's up nah. with Orlando? I mean, BX is BX. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> like, B, BX, BX goes in. But for you, what was like some of the differences between Orlando and being at home in BX in the Bronx? Um, first off, I you know the Meyer Briggs test, right? Mm-hmm. All right I'm like 98%. Um, I love to be around people. I can't be like, I don't like being um, in like silence and like you got to you got to drive to go and like far away uh, to go to like um, to be around people and, and all that. And and here I just go outside and I can just talk to whoever I'm just around a lot. I, I like to be around a lot of people. And okay. Orlando, it was just like, like, I didn't, I didn't need a car. Like I got a license literally just to move to Orlando. Um, <laughs> and also for like a job position, I seriously didn't like, I got my license when I was 24. Um, and that's real talk though. That's real. Like a lot of people I, I, who are from more rural areas don't realize that you can, there are people in New York, like in their forties and fifties that don't have driver's licenses cause you never need it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and over there, like then I had to pay car insurance. I had to get a car. Um, and it was just like the expenses went up, you know, and I'm thinking if I move over there, the, ex- the expenses is going to drop because of the rent, but right. the rent is going up over there. Um, it is, it is it's steadily going up and it's getting pricier and pricier. And then most of the college students, um, cause I was staying in East Orlando, most of the college students go ahead and, you know, their parents, um, book their, you know, uh, rent for them. And then you got to like, kind of get out of that area and go to a pricier area so that's what, what was happening um i got a place out there and end up paying more rent than i was in new york you know so if you're thinking of going over there you know think twice especially if again if you like to be around people because it's way different and if you love disney and you want to be there every weekend it's cool but outside of that i just orlando's my vibe 
Okay, but I mean, I definitely get the, the the vibe, the impression that you are outgoing. I know overseas, I was looking at some of your stories on Instagram. You're like, yo, pull up, and you're just meeting random people. <laughs> um, so just real quick for the people who might not know, uh, and we just met, which is awesome. So you're an entrepreneur, you're a digital nomad, you are a vegan. I mean, you're out here doing your thing. So why don't you tell the people a little bit about more about you besides that you come from the Bronx, like how you got into travel? Like, let, let's start because I know we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Um, So and and keep me on track, too, because I usually just go from topic to topic. Um, and I, just no, I got up. you. I got you because you're 99 <laughs> percent uh, extrovert. I am 52 percent introvert. So I got you. I'll be like, oh, hey, my okay, guy. OK, good. Good but bad. it's all easy here, man. <laughs> Listen, I actually so y'all don't know because we were talking a little bit before this trying to get some of these tech issues worked out. But um, uh, I pulled myself uh, a little glass of Johnny Walker Red. So, you know, we might go we might go 70 <laughs> minutes for today's interview. Who knows what's going to happen? But yeah, tell the people about yourself. Yeah, man. Well, you got the whiskey. I got the water right here. So I'm good. Um, I got both. So... Gang, gang. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm not vegan. Um, I eat I eat plant based. Um, okay okay i strictly do it just for just for health reasons um just to, just to be like an optimal state on my body and my mind that's why i do it um plus say i save a ton of money yes, um, bro. doing so i actually want to show like travelers like if you're trying to come down on the expenses um if you also want to lose weight if you just want to be like the, the feel as as best as you can feel um then then you can um save a lot of money just going plant based um like if I, my wife just came out with a free ebook um she's working on one now um and we're going to just show people how to save money and how to eat better at the same time like and make it easier for everybody like even on on the go when you're traveling in places um right. what to look for um how to save money even when you're abroad uh doing so so um yeah plant-based for the most part i do eat fish seafood whatever i, I ate okay, cheese okay. in Colombia. um okay. so it's not like a diehard that's all i do but meat right. for sure i'm just like eh, i'm done with that i just don't like it um i got yeah, you I'm, I'm uh from i'm from the, i was born and raised in the bronx my whole family's from puerto rico so i'm boricua um okay. and uh i've been i'd never actually traveled anywhere besides the east uh, growing up I've always been the, you know, the the Spanish family that would just go, you know, like like typical New Yorkers. Um, they just go like for, to the to all the states, hit up all the states, all the way to Florida, and back. <laughs> right. And that's that's yep. normally, you know, and when I say like the typical New Yorkers, it's just you know like the Hispanics that I'm that I would chill with. That's all we did. Um, and from there, just Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay and and that was it so it wasn't a trip usually when i went there it was somebody passed away um or mm. you know somebody's like really sick let's go visit them you know just in case they pass away i wasn't really a vacation i would be there three weeks stuck and i didn't get to do anything i wanted you know and i'll just go to the reggaeton clubs with my cousin and i wanted to explore but i i couldn't i was just stuck you know um it, i couldn't just go and take the train like i can here in new york and right. I didn't drive nothing. So I just had to be with the family. It wasn't really a vacation. So um, the only vacations I had growing up was Disney. That's it. Okay. So okay. I've, I've been obsessed with China. i um, going to Asia, going to Japan. Um, I didn't even know about Thailand um, until years ago, whatever, four years ago. Surprisingly, I didn't even know that was you know a country. And I heard, um, like, not heard, but I saw on Instagram and I started looking on YouTube, like, places to travel because my wife was looking at it. She's like, oh, we got it. You know, I want to travel the world. Right. Um, and I noticed how, like, deprived of travel I was, like, for so long. Yeah. And I just had this obsession, like, I've got to leave the country because I like spontaneity. I like to meet people, I, different people. I want to go somewhere where I don't speak the language. I love trying new foods and just new experiences. Like, I just want to, uh, to break the routine of what I was doing um and what was the other question because i feel like no I'm no going... <laughs> you, you're, to you're totally right on it man and I, I resonate with that so strongly because breaking routine is one of those things i do pretty much on a daily basis but having experience being in unfamiliar places that's that's part of the the thrill for me when i travel and go that's... explore yeah 
it's like I, I get a high off that just like as soon as I get off the airport I'm like I, it must be like placebo effect or something. Like, oh my, <laughs> even the air, even the air smells different. You'd be like, It'd oh, be it the smells same air. Yo, dude, <laughs> no lie though. Like if you, <laughs> I remember the first time I showed him in France, I was like, oh, the air is different. I don't know if I like the way it smells, but it's different, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that's a big yeah. distinction to make because there are certain, especially in really dense urban areas like New York or like areas of Los Angeles where cats never leave you can live your whole life in the bronx in areas of new york and you're good you're happy you got your friends and family everybody's around so for you to yeah. take that extra instance and say you know what let me break away from all of this stuff that looks familiar and just be willing to put myself out here dude that that's mm -hmm. admirable and i love that you you're, you're talking directly to that that's so cool yeah man um also i don't have like the like a lot of people have friends and families that they constantly come back for especially family like i hear a lot like oh i wouldn't live abroad because one of my one of my favorite topics to talk about is always you know either what the person loves or like where would you go like right. you have all the money right now where would you go because usually it's like ah we'll go here but they make excuses so i just want to get down to it. where would you go and yeah. um uh most of the time they would they would love to live you know uh, mexico or They'll say, I, I would love to live in, you know, Paris, like that. But they got family, so they don't want to stay away from the family, like, far. They constantly want to be here. Um, and they have the money to do whatever they want, but they 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 held down either by really close friends or family, whatever, or the spouse maybe doesn't want to do that. In my case, um, I'm extremely thankful because my wife, like, if I tell her, let's go, she's already, like, I'm wait I've been waiting for you, like, and... <laughs> <laughs> she's like she's like you know like um i'm i'll say you know we're going to south korea she's like i already have a plan for that you know like she's been wow. making the plans for this she has a, a notebook full of like plans when we hit up the countries and all that she loves to plan i don't i like the spontaneity um but um i'm thankful that it sounds unfortunate but it's really not it's a blessing i don't have any attachment i actually don't have family um that i'm close with at all at all okay um so i'm pretty just I, i'm I'm pretty much just um i have a handful of friends uh close close friends in my circle and then that's it and they like to travel anyway for the most part so it's you know it's i, I really have nothing holding me down and i see that as a blessing so that way i could just pick up and go you know and then meet other people and um to me i've learned like family's not um it, family to me has just been a uh a thing of, you know, you're related to them, but I call family anybody that just, you know, um, lo that's loyal, that if you genuinely cares. Mm -hmm. um, and I look for that all over the world. I've made, uh, I'm making, I'm making sure that I have quote unquote family um, yeah. everywhere I go. So when I come back, I'm always going somewhere where there's family. A hundred percent, you know, hopefully, uh, a warm place to stay or at least a warm smile to to see when you're there and maybe if you're lucky a place to stay and a good meal i i do i get it a hundred percent i've been adopted almost everywhere <laughs> i've gone and uh -huh. yeah f family has an has an expanding definition for me and i'd still make sure to see my family yeah. uh, but being able to to recognize the difference and to have a partner that supports that bro we need to do a show where you just talk about traveling with relationships. But before we, before we get I'd there, be dope, man. <laughs> dude, that, that's some really, that's next level stuff, man. I can barely go to the supermarket in a relationship. So, <laughs> I mean, my hat is off to you, my guy. Uh, so uh, let's keep diving then. So what was the first place you went to and, and what was that experience like? Okay. First spot um, I went to Puerto Rico doesn't count. Up to me so, and I went there so puerto rico doesn't count for two reasons because technically puerto rico is part of the united states just for anybody that didn't know technically yeah. puerto rico is domestic so i'm with you on that if you say the caribbean it's, yeah i'd say something but puerto rico is the u.s it's too similar that's why i remember last time i went was 2007 i know it's a mm. long time ago and 11 years a lot yeah. of things change especially after yeah. you know a hurricane and stuff um but uh yeah it's too too much like if you blindfold me and put me there i might think i'm in miami but then i'm like no 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 wait i'm in i'm in puerto rico because um, <laughs> it, it has where, where i live um it has that vibe over there where my, i mean where my family does um but first spot last year um january like literally i think january 3rd 
I went with my friends. I was like uh, a group of eight of us. We went for um, one of my friend's birthdays to Barbados. That was my first trip. Um, that was your first, first trip was last year. Yeah. Last wow, year, bro. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really awesome. Yeah. I, I love that island, man. Um, okay. Small island, but the people are so like, warm and i love the accents you know i'm i, yeah. I love well, that's one thing i like is like uh talking to the locals with their accent that was that was really cool um of course they you know i got ripped off man i went to oysters and uh they they saw right away i'm not from there and my my friends got their plates for half the price i got mines i ordered mines last and i'm like yeah. like i didn't know and i'm sitting and i'm like yo how much you pay for that and i got some marlin and like shrimp or whatever and they like saying the prices, and I and they asked me, and I had the same plate as my friends. They black, <laughs> they black, and and I'm like, oh man, that I look like a tourist. I can't. There's no hiding. It. Um, so they they charged me double the price of stuff here and there. Yeah, well, I was cool with it. I mean, I, it comes I with the culture. Like, that, that's a rite of passage, yeah. bro. Yeah, I'm cool with it. Next time, I just let my my boys order. <laughs> right, and that's sometimes you gotta have somebody work on your behalf. The first time I went to uh, Burkina Faso was like that. So you learn, bro. That's an experience. So Barbados yeah. and and so I, I'll ask about a little bit more about that because it's so close. I think a lot of people might not understand that there's still a lot of value in going out there and seeing the the culture. So what maybe surprised you the most? when you, you know, through your experience in Barbados, what, what stood out to you the most that was really positive? I pay attention to a lot of the details of how something uh, is different right away. Mm-hmm. And th- this was, this one was weird. First thing I noticed is people didn't say thank you when you hold the doors for them. That was okay. first, <laughs> coming out the airport. But then when <laughs> I came out and, and it's weird because I, even though they don't say thank you, they're very, very, they, and this is this happened like almost everywhere I ate at or mm-hmm. anytime I ask a question or just like smiling at somebody or just talking random. It was very warm, like very inviting. Like yeah. like I I like, oh, what's up? Like I, I I've seen you before, like we've talked before, type of like familiar familiar um kind of vibes. Um, okay. with the people there with the locals. I was good. I didn't really see Besides the the snorkeling um um catamaran cruise that we went on, I, I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't really see a tourist like I didn't really spot them. So mm-hmm. it was it was cool, you know. I thought it was gonna be a lot more touristy for some reason. I guess because I hear the stories about Bahamas and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I never been on a cruise yet. Um, so you know, I I j- I was just glad to be in an area where um I'm like a observing like the locals i'm not seeing people from outside the country um and then they drive pretty crazy and in barbados (laughs) when we got to the hotel afterwards i'm like yo if they gave me a free whip i would not drive in this country like i'd be (laughs) i would be scared like there was some grand theft auto type of driving like that was some 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 tokyo drift action going on just out there reckless yeah something i I haven't played that that game or i don't know if that's a movie (laughs) Play. All good, all good. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a drift. I'm a drift head. So, oh, but they okay. they was out there reckless on the streets, and you they, didn't even have a license at this point, or you did have a license. I, no, I did. I did have a license, but I was just like, I'm not. I'm not driving here. And it's right. funny because in Colombia, I said the same thing. I'm like, damn. Yo. And in the U.S., for as much as I say people be driving uh, reckless sometimes, nah, they drive real professional over here. <laughs> um, but, Everybody's an Uber black driver in the U.S. Compared to- <laughs> yeah. But not um. Besides that, I noticed also um, like they they're very chill, like relaxed. It's like the day goes really long out there. Yeah. Um, they're not hectic. They're, it's such slow pace, but I I liked it. It was a it was a good one. Even though I'm I like fast pace and I like um like being in a fast environment. Everybody's like really chill in Barbados. Um, I recommend Oystens. It's fri- only on Friday nights, if I remember right. Um, go out there. The seafood is amazing. Um, I recommend Marlin. It's the only thing I had there because, you know, again, they tried to, rip, they tried to um, rip me off with the price so I couldn't eat something else. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, man, it was it was amazing. And I've tried so, a lot of seafood. What's the name of that joint? You said Oysters. How do I spell that right quick? Um, O-I-S-T-I-N-S. Okay. But appreciate it, bro. For yeah. those of y'all listening, like, we are literally 
calling each other. So I'm just like, yo, I'm trying to get some good food too. Like, listen, I I didn't just yeah. do this podcast for my health and <laughs> learn about plant based eating. All right, yeah, let me get some Marlin <laughs> off my back. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem with that. It's my show. I do what I want. Um, <laughs> but, dude, that, that's an amazing experience. I haven't been down there uh, yet. However, what, what you're talking about, a lot of it is the island experience, man. Things are just at their own pace. You know, everybody knows everybody. And I'm glad you felt yeah. the warmth and enjoyed and appreciated the experience there. Because island life, if y'all haven't been to an island, it is different than being on the mainland. Like, islands are, are weird in a fun way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like that vibe when it, it's chill, but it's also like like lit at the same time. It is it, it was weird because at at night it's just they just put music anywhere, like reggae anywhere. Or, and just turn up and then eat and just that's it, just chill. I, I really I really enjoyed that. Um, I went swimming at night. I've never done that. Okay, and it was a full moon, and I was just like, bro, I was like, this is amazing. Like the feeling. I had, I'm like, yo, I can't believe I'm in Barbados. Because in my first international trip, I'm literally yeah. like, ah, I made it. Like, this right. is crazy. Thank you, God. I'm out here. I can't believe it. Like, my friends, you know, back home where I work right now are sleeping and dreading the, you know, I was just thinking like that because I was one of those wanting to get out watching on Instagram people travel. I'm like, yo, soon I'm going to go. I'm out the country real soon. Yeah. Um, I was going to say also... um, I went jet skiing out there for the first time. Okay. That that's one of my top five things I think ever to do. Water um, motorcycle. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I haven't done that yet, dude. I'm I'm over here like living this experience with you. It bro, it's one of the most relaxing and, and like I, I loved it. It's really not relaxing, but to me it is because I like speed. I like <laughs> yeah, I like to race at the same time. I'm super competitive. So my friends is just it. like like, yo, we out, and I'm there with a – I have it on my Instagram, a little clip or whatever. Um, I'm holding the 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 three-way arm on the GoPro. Yeah. And I'm holding that thing, like, about to crack it, about hard I'm holding it, because I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, if this – if I lose this, I, it's gone. Like, I ain't right. going to find it because I got <laughs> contact lenses. Yeah. yeah, I got – so I can't even open my eyes in the water. Um, and and uh. It was just, it was amazing, man. If it was 30 minutes, so it felt like two hours that I'm on that thing. Dude, that, that's but, beautiful, man. I, and I can relate and definitely don't lose that GoPro. That GoPro. We gotta, <laughs> gotta get you a strap, something, some magnets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, dude, that, that's an amazing first experience. And I can only imagine swimming at night under a full moon. Like you are, you're helping me map out new goals because I've never thought that way. Now when I look at flights, I'll be looking at prices, but I'll also be looking at moon phases. I'll be like, yo, this is a blue moon, though. So what you know about <laughs> swimming under these waves in Thailand with a blue moon? Like, uh, bro, man. that's I live for that, the, the, the additional, that extra tack that makes a moment special, man. That's beautiful. So yeah. <laughs> after Barbados, where'd you go after that? We'll get to your next experience. And now I want to talk about, like, some cultural stuff. So okay. where'd you hit after Barbados? After Barbados, I didn't leave the country until March, and that was, um, let's see, I went to, I can't believe I forgot. Oh, I went to Latvia. Latvia? Yeah. First okay. time in Europe, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Eastern Europe, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful architecture everywhere. So, it's so small. And, and I got I to yeah. ask you a question, bro, just off rip. Why? Yeah. Oh man, that's the first question I get. Besides, what's I know it is. Latvia? I know it is. That, that's that's I know. People are thinking latkes, and it's like no, it's not. It's not a potato pancake season. It's Latvia. It's a country. So, what drove you to go to Latvia after Barbados, where you have all that rich melanated culture, the sun, the seafood? You went to Latvia, my guy. Talk to me about that. Explain Bro, me something. I, I so. I'm like, all right, I'm on a budget, and I've been wanting to go to Europe, and I was planning it to go with, uh, first, it was with my wife, and then we looked at the flights. They went up. At the time, I was, like, off and on with, like, a retail job, so I'm like, damn, yeah, this sucks, and my boy was already, like, um, he was going to join us to go on um, on on the trip, so there's going to be three of us going to Latvia. What The only reason why I chose um, Latvia and not, like, you know, uh, Paris or whatever, because that was, or Greece, that was it. Yeah. The price was too good for me to say no. And I, I had this, um, 
I'm in a in a travel club, and then I just went and I looked at Latvia, and I'm like, what the hell? And I see the price, and I go, nah, this is crazy. It was like a four day, a four day, three night stay. Um, it was at the Radisson Blue. Okay, I didn't even yeah, know yeah. it was that hotel. I just saw the what price. What was the price? I didn't what was care the price? about anything. All I saw, I pay one hundred nineteen dollars for, for four um, days and three without, nights without the flight. Yeah, I saw at the Radisson Blue. It was a four star yep, hotel. Um, I looked at the the pictures and stuff like that. I'm like, hold up, let me see this real quick. And I saw that it included the uh, breakfast buffet and dinner buffet. I said, <laughs> I'm in. Because food is a way, you know, I get, like, that. that's a way to trick me into things is gotcha. just food. Um, yeah. If it's meat in there, forget it, It's not going to work. Um, but, yeah, that's – I saw $119 on that. And I, I was like, yo, I'm going to book this. My wife's like, yo, just go with your with your boy. And I was like, you you know, you sure? She's like, yeah, because she preferred, she preferred not to be in the cold. And the temperatures were freaking. It was uh March, okay. So still fall. It was freezing over there. Yeah. And when when I got there, um, there was still uh, if I remember, it, yeah, there was there was uh, a uh, snow everywhere. Thank God it was not ice, but it was snow everywhere. Um, and then um, it's it's definitely it's definitely way different than like the experience from Barbados. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, the way the people were very inviting, and and Barbados very like warm and and temperature wise too. Um, the people there were more of like they just look right through you. Yeah. They don't really acknowledge you. Um, they like again. I, I like I hold doors whenever I can. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't even acknowledge your existence there. Um, and I'm like, yo. After like the third person before I got to the hotel, I'm holding, I'm holding the door. I'm like, yo, people here really are in a, either in a bad mood. Or what's going on? Yeah, I just picking up on little things like that, like little differences. Yeah. And and I asked, I was in a, and I met really cool people out there. My my boy and I met people from uh from Paris, from Norway, uh Sweden. Wait, Sweden, I think is Norway. Um, from all over Europe. So I, I asked them. I said, look, um, I know you probably got asked this or whatever. This may sound weird, but how come y'all don't say thank you when we hold the door? You know, and they just let they just saying, well, we don't talk to strangers. You know, that's that's not really like normal. So then I was like, oh, that makes sense. So I just started to ask questions about the culture. Like, how come you guys seem a little bit more like distant, you know, from a stranger? Right. Like, why is that so? Because that's how I'm feeling. So I told them, you know, this is how I feel. Like, what's going on? And they said, you know, we, normally we we grow up only talking to family, close yeah. friends or or neighbors. And I didn't know that. Um, so for me, when I'm starting to learn that, I'm like, oh, okay. So then I, right away, I just adjusted. Yeah. Um, and for me, those are little tiny things, little differences that I just get like obsessed about because I like to learn and like really immerse, like why does a certain culture like, you know, act this way or, or see it this way. So I just, for but me, dude, that was, dude, a hundred, a hundred percent, like, and this is super important for anybody listening. That's the difference right there. That's the difference between a tourist and a traveler or an adventurer is that you're curious enough to ask a question. When a lot of people, I was a tour guide in, in Paris and oh, people yeah. would say, well, how come they ain't doing this and this for me and this and this? And I was like, <laughs> you know, you're in a different country. Things are different. And instead of taking that with a bad attitude and saying, oh, you know, don't go out to Latvia because nobody's going to say thank you. Hold it. Like, honestly, <laughs> who gives a shit? Like, yeah, yeah, you went. You got to have a different experience for one hundred nineteen dollars in a four star, you know, hotel. But you asked the question, and that that makes all the difference, bro. So, like, seriously, salute to you because I feel like that's the spirit that we should have when we visit other people's lands. Latvia's yeah, been I, around for a long time, bro. You know, they're not going to change because you showed up or because I show up. Yeah, I, I've only met one person has been. Wait, you been to Latvia? I haven't. I have not. But okay, one hundred nineteen dollars. Okay. Shoot. Let me find a plane right quick. Yeah, if people yeah, exactly. And the the flight, um I was staying in Orlando at the time, so I went or MCO by the way. And I don't know. I don't have no clue why. MCO got the highest freaking uh flights, like international flights. I I don't know why. Like Is that the airport to, in Latvia? Yeah. Okay. In or in Orlando, in Orlando. Oh in Orlando, okay, okay. Yeah, so MCO and I don't know somebody listening to this, they probably like word because I literally fly to New York, 
in order to right. take a flight somewhere else. Right, and right. Like that that's the reason why I'm in New York right now. Um next mm-hmm. month I'm leaving. But I'm like, if I was to leave from Orlando to go, you know, to my next destination, I'd be paying like double. Easily, easily double. Okay. And that would be a and that would be like lowest fare coming out of MCO. I just I don't understand it. It can't right. it can't be Disney. Like it gotta be another reason. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um the food in Latvia was amazing. Like you can literally taste like how fresh it is. I loved it because I did research and are banned there. So I was Wait. loving it. Yo, get your health up. Go spend summer. Get your get your beach body right in Latvia for nothing. It's <laughs> yeah. Um nah, the architects was beautiful. Um and uh what else i did over there i didn't i didn't do that much outside just because it was windy and i didn't go as prepared as i thought i was you know gonna be right i um, mean you you from you from the bronx <laughs> living in orlando like i'm not mad at you for that i i do love that you could share about that just being open to a different perspective and asking the question man i think so many people go so much further and get you know we talk about getting miles but get the maximum value out of their experiences by just asking a few questions and humbling themselves, bro. Like you come across as a real humble dude. And I I appreciate that. And I know people who engage with you abroad appreciate that. So thank you for representing us. Well, like, thank you. Yeah, man. I, and, and don't get me wrong. The first time that they did it though, I was like, like, yo, what's up? Like, you're not going to say nothing. Cause I, (laughs) I, I, I have that, you know, I have that, like, I, that's East My, Coast, baby. That's just East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't say, like, over here, they say thank you for you. You know, and it's funny. You hold oh, the door, no. like, you're... No, sorry, you, they'll say, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... And then That's I'll turn the around, Coast like, oh, thing. shit. Oh, shit. Thank you. Thank you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's an East Coast thing. We carry that energy. Um, you know, but I got to the point, bro, I don't say bless you when people sneeze just because I think it's stupid. And yeah. so I need to watch what rooms I'm in or how sensitive people are. Cause some people be really getting butt hurt. And I'm like, yo, like this is, this don't make no sense. You want to sit down and look at a Wikipedia article with me? Or are you just going to take this <laughs> one? You're going to take this <laughs> on the chin. That's what I thought. Um, but, uh, I really want to talk about something interesting because, uh, we were discussing earlier, and a lot of times, all the time, this is a show for displaying and showcasing and just freaking celebrating the adventures of men of color. Yeah. But you know how you know as a curator on Instagram, y'all need to check out all of his accounts. We'll have them all listed. It is difficult to find Hispanic men out there traveling. Everybody wants to open yeah, up my- a damn taco chain in France, but I can't find and open a Latin club. Everybody loves the dance. Everybody loves the culture. I can't find Hispanic dude anywhere. How has this changed your perception of yourself or others? What you, you see that, right? I do. I do. I literally want to show love and and feature like I I initially initially um I started I started the the account because I was like, yo, they're not featuring me and yeah. I'm tight. I'm like, yo, I'm tight. Yeah. They're not featuring me. I was like, yo, fuck it. I'm gonna feature myself. Right. I said I'm gonna build a page and feature myself. I said, fuck it. I'm not gonna 100%. I'm not gonna tag I'm not gonna tag nobody no more. I'm yeah. gonna freak that. I was like, I, I can't and I was tight because my boy's uh Dominican, light skinned just like me, and they feature him on Black Travel Feed, and I'm like, what? And then they, I'm like, yo, nah, that's crazy, bro. I'm like, nah. Nah, I kept tagging them, and then he goes and gets featured and travels the new club. And I was mm-hmm. like, yo, that's I only see black travels on that page, even though they don't really say it. And I, I'm like, yo, they just showed me no love. I'm going to show myself love when I build the page. So I just, yeah, I build it. And I, I was looking for Spanish travelers. It's funny. Um, I want to show myself love on the page. I'm only there like three times. Right. I, I didn't really feature myself on there. Um, but I was looking for Latin, you know, the hashtags and stuff like that. And I just find a lot of like Brazilian. Okay. Doing their thing. Like they like influencers and like like heavy i even found like over a million followers and stuff like that of travelers but mm. they like the captions are in portuguese and all that and i'm like that's not like it really doesn't relate to me so i know it's not gonna relate to you know to also build off of this account um 
And like, cause I want to build it. I, I had in mind like, Oh, I could, you know, I'm gonna build relationships out, out of this account and show love. And it's been difficult. Cause I'm like, yo, it's really only, I've only found, uh, um, black travelers yeah. on it. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm, I just kept featuring. And then I just stopped thinking about it. Cause I was like, Oh, well, I, I'll build a, you know, a, a page for Latino travelers, you know, some other time when I find them. But right now I can't find. Yeah, them. it's it's a thing that I because I want to talk about all perspectives on this show as long as it's not the dominant perspective, because I think we need role models like yourself or all these other amazing guests I've had to to in, inspire and just be the resource that we needed. You know what I mean? Like if somebody else from the Bronx has said, hey, my guy, come out to Barbados and it'll be lit. Like, you would have done that at 19, man. Because there are others out there doing yeah. it. It's just, it's so <laughs> difficult to to find them and attract them and, and find platforms for them. So I'm super, you know, excited that you're here to, to share your story. But what do you think are some of the things holding, I mean, are there, you know, Latino brothers out there traveling that we just don't know about? Are there, Because they say the same thing about black men hey, black men don't travel. Mm-hmm. As soon as you go abroad, that's all you see is black men. Not, not yeah, all you see, but yeah, it's man. easy to find them, right? <laughs> like, it's easy yeah. as shit to find oh, yeah. them. Um, and oh, then yeah. when it, so are there, you know, other Hispanic brothers out there traveling or it's not, uh, it's not happening? What, what's kind of, the, what's the status or you don't know? I honestly don't know because I'm very new. So I can't, I can't just go. I can only give you from mm-hmm. three countries. That's it. I can't give you more than that because I don't know. And, and it might've been where I was at too. I, I didn't really want to go to the tourist. That's area, fair. That's fair. Um, that much only for the photo. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really stay there. Like for example, in, in, um, in Latvia, no Spanish. People. Right. Like, no, like none. Um, in Barbados, it was on the mm-hmm. cruise, a uh, few Europeans. That's, but right. no Spanish. Um, Colombia, that's a hard one because there's people there that look Asian, mm-hmm. Filipino. They look um, Puerto Rican and Cuban because it's very similar. And then people that look uh, Mexican. And then you got people that uh, look like um, like Russian, like the Russian feature. And I ask. And then I, that kind of know, Sib- I've, I've Siberian feature and or then, Siberian more like northern like the yeah, the, the yeah, natives some, of that area ver- okay yeah so like that like those type of features um and the, and and when i ask and then what's weird is you know like the blue eyes and stuff and then i'll go and ask like random you know like hey where, where are you guys from you guys locals whatever you guys living here nomads and they'll go and respond in spanish sure. i'm like what and they're they they're yeah. cooking all those and they look so yeah. different like it was it was crazy um so I didn't really meet any nomads. I didn't meet any nomad out there. That was yeah. French. That was, uh, and they were all um, uh, European and, and black too. I met some uh, black couple okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Well, shout out to that, man. Shout out to you being out there and doing your thing because I, granted, I'm not in all the salsa clubs I find. You know, that's not what I'm going to do on my night out when I'm, you know, adventuring the world. I'm not in any of these damn taco chains or anything like that. So really shout out to you for for being out there and, and being proud of your heritage and, and looking for others, because I think it's going to start to attract people as they hear more about your story or see more pages and learn more about you. I think it's really dope. And you mentioned one thing that I'd love to dive into. So let's talk about this nomad life and this digital nomad life. How have you started yeah. shaping your life to have it focused around travel? Because if I understand correctly, that's currently what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, not, uh, about 80, 80% right now, the digital nomad, just because it's a lot of, okay, so it's a, it's a shit ton. Of so let, let's back up. Um, let, let's talk about what a digital nomad is and how it is allowing you to travel the world. So, so digital nomad is just somebody that can, uh, generate income, like the uh, location mm-hmm. independent, uh, kind of like known as like laptop lifestyle, yeah. you know, you just. You really could run your business or just generate income. It doesn't have to be a business. Um, okay. Online. So what sort of, what sort know, of fields um, of, of study or work do well here? What, what have you seen or what do you currently do? Oh, I've seen a lot. 
Um, well, from first what I've seen was um, a lot of people like uh, do Facebook uh, ad agencies or run social medias for businesses, get paid to do mm-hmm. that, uh, get paid to help people with their brands. Um, I've uh, come across people that do like find that do what they normally would do in the office, but they figured out like I guess they got cool with the boss or whatever and figured, hey, I can. I can just do this on a laptop or they do management for like a hospital or something like that. And they do everything online. So they just, they just figured out like, um, I, I can possibly do this, you know, um, spend a week in Thailand and still work, um, at the job during the day. And, you know, just on the weekends, I can just spend the whole weekend in, in Thailand and just chill or even the evenings go out and have fun. Um, and, I've seen teachers that teach, uh, my wife got accepted, um, like two months ago for VIP kid and you can teach, uh, English to students online, or I think it's a one-on-one tutor, English tutor, uh, to kids in China. Oh, wow. So she's, she's waiting to get books still. Cause it's like slow season mm-hmm. apparently what they told her. Um, but at least she, you know, she's in there, so she'll be able to teach on the laptop to, um, a, a Chinese, uh, child like uh probably age of like from four to five something okay like so like one-on-one so. virtual or video uh education yeah wow, dude that's yeah. I, and that's so. a, that's a lot of value because some people aren't really hip to what this is i'm familiar with the space i really appreciate that you know it well enough too i mean you're living it to talk to it so things like being web designers, running social media accounts, oh yeah, uh, social uh, Facebook ad agencies, which is something I'm involved in. Let's say you, nice. um, let's say you're we a gotta blogger. Talk, then. Let, <laughs> we, we we gonna talk. Yeah, happy. We, to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's say okay. you're an Instagram influencer, or you run a successful yeah. blog, or you're doing teaching project management. These are opportunities, and I love that you're not only being rare in this space. Of, of culture and, and what you present and the experience and perspective you have. But this is a new wave that I think a lot of people can get on if they really put the work in. It's work, right? It's a lot of work. It's work. work. It's, <laughs> you, you can't bullshit. You can't. And I've done. Oh, and I've done it. Been inconsistent. Oh, my God. Like crazy amounts. Like I look back and I, it's like I want to uh, slap myself, wake myself up. Like, yo, stop playing because you're only taking time away from from what you want to do yeah. like all that i'm just hindering it um and you got to really really be committed and and i'm not gonna say the same cliche thing i'm just you know the real thing is just you got to be consistent and if you get up to go to the job and you don't want to be there late and you spend the eight hours and you know you're not going to leave because you don't want to get fired just treat it that way just dedicate the time to it and take yourself more serious than taking somebody else's um you know the 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 being an employee you take it serious to pay your bills but working for yourself take that shit more serious because it's it's for yourself right like that's going to give you freedom and to play around with that you know and i i'm speaking to myself too um because i could get i could go ahead and like kind of doubt something and then all of a sudden i'm like i'm like yo that's that's bullshit now nah, i'm gonna get this done yeah and out of like frustration, just go and get it done. Cause I'm like, this is easy. Otherwise God would not have put me in that position or given me that idea to do it. If I didn't, if I couldn't do it, like it's, if the idea is there, it's cause there's already the way to do it. You just got to go ahead and figure out what, what uh, resources you have. Like what cards are you, what cards do you have in your hand? Cool. That's all the cards you need. Figure out, do you need to make a phone call? Do you need to be cool with the boss to be able to go ahead and possibly work from the laptop instead of having to go into the office right. and then and then tell them what you're up to. Hey, listen, I have this. Th- this is my goal. I would like to live abroad. I'd be much happier. I'd be much more productive if I can just work in a different environment. I'll still be, I work on time. You know, if you want me to work, you know, or two, just to make sure, you know, everything is great from out there. Um, if, you know, just what, what can you do to make, to make it, work for your lifestyle that you want um if you're like uh i, I got into photography recently and mm-hmm. i really have to uh step it up um because my pictures don't look anything like how the accounts i want it to look right but um i'm, I'm gonna get there regardless i mean i don't got i, I don't want to copy i just like the the scenic pictures that be taken on a mountain and stuff like that just, that's dope but i decided if i can get the photography down then 
I can go ahead and add this to my skill set. Mm-hmm. So then it'll be an extra income I can I can generate off doing something that I like anyway. Because I right. do like taking pictures. Right. And I like to be in them. Um, so I said, if I could get that down, then I can open up a window now to take pictures at a restaurant and put and post it and tag them. And then they can, int- you know, uh, uh, pay me or give me something free in exchange for the service I'm providing. And right there, even though they didn't pay me, I'm getting the free meal. So if they would have paid me, I would have had to spend it on a meal anyway. Right. So I just like barter. Yeah, right. that's it. And that's a really good way to uh, to look at it. And I love that you mentioned taking good account of the skills and resources you already have, because I think whether in business or your personal life or even when it comes to travel, I think in adventures, you know, we were talking about being out there and not knowing what's going to happen and being in unfamiliar territory. The first thing you do when you get off that plane and definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but you get off that plane, you say, OK, what do I have going on for me? right now do i know somebody do i have cell service <laughs> yeah. do i have wi-fi what's in my bag do i have a you know what kind of mm-hmm. skills and attributes am i bringing to the table and i think that's part of the reason why adventures and the people that have been on the show are so similar to you because they do that they do that work every day they've been in situations where they've had to challenge themselves and say hey i'm not seeing an opportunity here can i pull something more out of myself to make this work and get the result i want Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a lot more, man. You touched on a lot of the things that, um, that you can do like to, to live abroad or to travel as long as you want. Um, and just to be, you know, to have the freedom, cause everything is just really the, the freedom, having the freedom to be yourself, do whatever you want, whenever, and, um, not having to worry about like, I have to come back to the job. Right. Um, one thing that, um, one thing that I did, um, like about i think it was in may so in may i had a decision do i do i go to the florida keys i was staying in orlando do i go to the florida keys and continue working construction which i I just absolutely hated it um breathing in dust every day and all this um or like and i would have to stay down there for like six months like commit to staying down there at a hotel just to to work at the hotel project that that uh uh, my friend landed, uh, which I was working for him. And I said, I can't do that. Like, I got to, like, I'm, it doesn't sit right with me. I got to travel. Like, I have to travel. It was, it was like uh, such an uneasy uh, feeling of, like, if I would have taken that, even though I was struggling financially, like, really yeah. bad. Yeah. I was having to borrow money, like, almost every week. Um, you know, shout out to my boy Jay. Um, always like he's always looking out for me. Yeah, shout out um, Jay. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, his name's Mr. Fit Traveler, by the way. So I just gotta give him a shout out, man, because that that dude show has um helped me out so much more than family, man. And um, I I was in that position where I where I said it is it's so easy for me to take this because I need the money, right. but then. If I take that, it's like I said no to everything I wanted to do. And wow. I said, well, if I if I just take this, everything's going to work out because God always comes through. It's always going to work out. Um, and I just I, I decided, no, I can't take it. So I told the dude after a few days, he gave me a few days to think about it because he knew my position. He knew what I was up to. He was supported yeah. it, too. He looked out for me, you know, even though he has this company and stuff. Um, so. He said, look, I respect it if you can't take it. I just don't have work for you in Orlando. So I said, okay, this is where things start to unfold now. And, and I'm going to see, you know, what God has a, a, a plan for me because I just took a huge leap of faith by saying no to steady income right now. Yeah. Let's yeah. see what's going to happen. And God always came through. I, st- I, like, I was staying at a spot for the amount of money I can afford to pay at the moment, but like, mm-hmm. but like a, a family member. And then um, I was supposed to leave in June. I left, didn't know where I was going and God never leaves me in the street. So the guy says, yo, you can stay at my house. I'll be at the floor of the keys. You know, same, same guy. Yeah. Um, the, the owner of the construction company is like, stay in my spot. You can look after the house. You're good. You know, I trust you guys. Just, you know, feed the turtles and the frogs. <laughs> sure. That's it. Um, so I was like, thank you, God. He gave me a month there. I had 10 days. Um, and 
10 days before I had um, booked my flight, my one-way flight to Colombia, um, I was like, shit, I got nowhere to stay. I don't know where I'm going to stay at. This lady randomly calls me up that I met as a client, and she said, Anthony, where are you going to stay? Because I heard you're going to, you know, you got to leave, you know, um, your boss's house. You know, I, I heard the conversation. Where are you going to stay? I said, oh, I'll stay in the car. I don't mind. It's only 10 yeah. days. I don't care. My wife's wow. with it. Wow. You know, yeah. we li- we li- we're going to go after our dreams. And we're gonna make it happen. I don't give a shit about anybody looking down on me. Yeah, I look down on them because they're gonna be in the same in the same house in the same fucking state forever. So you can look down on me. I yeah. I know what I'm doing. She goes and says, "Huh? Well, I spoke to your boss because I wanted to know about you know you a little bit and your wife. He said you guys are good, so you guys can stay here until you got you know you got to go to Colombia. You don't have to pay me nothing." I was like, wow. "Yeah, this is crazy." And God looked out for me. I'm telling you, Matt, for I lived a year and a half without paying rent in Orlando. Same scenario before that. Um, so I just, I just wanted to cut it short to, to emphasize, if you're thinking about traveling full-time, or you're thinking about like a nomad lifestyle and making it work, there's always a way. doesn't matter your, your, your position. You always got the resources. They're right in front of you. You won't see them because it doesn't look like you know, five thousand or ten thousand dollars. It does. It's not gonna look that way. It's gonna look like, like nothing. It's gonna yeah. look like shit. I can't do it. If it looks like shit, I can't do it. Then the opposite is true. It means yeah, it's already been done. You just gotta figure out how to get there. That's all. Dude, a hundred percent. And uh, <clears throat> gotta clear my throat. You got me choked up here a little bit, dude. That's that's faith, and that's Drink my that's hundred percent. Hey, shoot, you <laughs> salute, uh, that's. <laughs> Dude, that that's faith, man. That that speaks to your level of faith in 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 you know a higher power and also your abilities and things working out. And sometimes that that's all it takes. It's not seeing what's in front of you. It's knowing that what you need is going to be there when you need it. And yeah. that's that that's really powerful. I appreciate you sharing that. And yeah. we've been rolling for a little bit, so I want to know about the projects and what you got coming up in the next few minutes. We got because I know you got a lot going on. So. Let's talk to the people. Tell them what you got going on. Yeah, man. Um, so the projects right now uh, that I have is um, I got stuff. Um, I'm working out with Millennials Abroad. Um, okay, and- so let, let's back up. You have yeah. a travel account, a travel Instagram account called Millennials Abroad, which is a dope account, y'all. Make sure you follow it. It'll be in the notes. Uh, appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have, I'm working on that and the Melanin, the Melanin Travel Club also. So I kind of want to okay. link them at some point um, just because I want to start a podcast like that, um, kind of like, like this. Um, you know, I have travelers and sharing their experiences and mainly, mainly having people that's out there doing it that they can share their story so that other travelers go, well, or people that aspire to travel full time can go, oh, shit, they did it. I'm going to do it too. So that's, one thing I have in, in mind for that, mm-hmm. um, I want to have, like, um, people that just follow the page, give them some type of, like, um, uh, incentive, even for being part of the community. Like, if you mention Millennials Abroad here, you know, get, get like, a deal um, or whatever. Um, so I started building relationships in Colombia with, like, a, with like tour guides. Um, yeah. So I, I, uh, I'm still in the works of seeing what deal, like, they want to give. And I want to do that everywhere I go. Just like show love to the people that support support the account. Um, yeah. Also, uh, what do I want to do with it? I would love to find like you like we were talking about before um, some uh, Latino travelers and really just um, like have have more people have more Spanish people also just featured on the page um and let them know like what's possible like you guys could be doing this too you don't have to be rich i thought you had to be rich so um i know a lot of people might think the same thing um and just to really figure out um a way to really have as many streams of income as possible even if they're little because it's all gonna pay something off right you know um so that's what i'm focused on now um, I'm building a website um, through Wix. Thank God, I don't need to do like coding or nothing like that. <laughs> I know, I used to do yeah. it. I feel you. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's so not me. Um, I'm like tapping out, throwing in the white flag for like any little thing of coding. So, um, thank God for that. And then I'm also I have a, 
my personal podcast, which I want to do more of just like what I'm going through and being consistent on it. I kind of took a, a break when I was in Colombia a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, let me see, what else am I up to? I'm gonna, you so know, have you your, heard of black? Yeah. What's ahead. your question? No, I was gonna say, have you heard of black travel fest? I haven't. Tell me more about this. What is this? So black, tra- um, uh, Deidre, that's Deidre Dares is her Instagram account. Um, uh, they're, they're doing these trips to Bali. This one's coming up, uh, in fall, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like end of October, beginning of November. It's like a six, uh, a six day trip. It's going to be dope. Um, I'm one of the, my, my accounts are one of the sponsors for it. Okay. Uh, so it's picked, um, Smart. I'll be there and okay. I'm actually leaving to Bali, uh, September like 8th, I think. Okay. So your next trip is coming up soon. Hey. Yeah, so I'll be staying in Bali uh, for the next, like, three months or so, mid-November. Wow. Yeah. So you're just living out there? Yeah, I'm going to stay out there. Um, and you'll pull up to the to event? S- yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I just want to go out there, do collaborations, meet. I already have set up. Um, that way, when I go there, I already have friends. And, uh, you know, like I was talking about before, you know, like family, like I'm coming back. Uh, just they'll show me the spots, you know, we chill, take photos, blog and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm more into blogging than before. Yeah, I didn't do it before because I see myself on on video and I'm like, I don't like it. Like, it's not up to the level I want. No, nah, get over that. So we're, we're going to solve that right now. Plug your YouTube channel before we close out. What's your YouTube channel? Because you've been you've been out here. Oh, uh, shit. I, <laughs> I'll be avoiding it. I'll be avoiding it, man. Nah, I'll you're on the spot. You you at the point, bro. This is what we do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm gonna give it anyway. Um, so it's Ant uh six one nine. That's it. And okay. literally, it should be the first or second um channel that pops up. There's okay. another um like wrestler or something that pops up. That's not me. So nah, that that ain't, that ain't gang. He ain't loyal. <laughs> That's what's up, man. I, I almost, dude, you got so many irons in the fire. You got a podcast. You got multiple accounts. This guy builds some impressive accounts. We're talking over 10,000 followers per account. So he's curating some great content, adding a lot of value. You guys will see all this stuff in the notes. So, bro, you're out here doing it on the digital space. Uh, and vlogging is no exception. So I'm looking forward to more of the content there, bro. You, you're really out here. Uh, yeah, man. I, I got to, I want to make the most, like, I want to tap into the, you know how they say, I, I heard this and it's funny. It said, if, if somebody tells you you've got potential, it's an insult. Because mm. that means you ain't doing shit. Wow. So I, I, I was like, oh, I, I'm, I see my potential and I see too much potential. So I'm like, shit, I ain't doing nothing. You need to start um, burning this potential up, bro. Yeah. I have to tell myself, like, shit, I left, like, like when you go to the gym and you're like, yeah. I can't even do another rep. Like, that's how I want to feel with all the like content and ideas that I already have to put out there. Yeah. Leave it all on the so, floor. Yeah, Dude. Yeah, man. I... <laughs> I, I've never heard that phrase before and I'm in love with it immediately, bro. We've been, we've been jamming for this little bit of time and I'm so glad that we had some time in the same time zone, pretty much to talk and share. And oh, thank yeah. you for, for all the perspective you shared, dude. I'm so, so happy you're here out here with the point Noir tribe. And man, best yeah. of luck to everything you're doing. I, we'll definitely be in touch. Th- and oh, uh, bro. y'all make sure to check out the Melanin Travel and Millennials Abroad and his YouTube channel where he's vlogging. And it's been a pleasure, bro. We're definitely going to catch oh, up. I, I, man, I'm, it's, this was exciting, man. I really, I really enjoyed being on the podcast, man. I Dude, appreciate We're going to do, do this in person, bro. Don't even worry about it. We're, we're going to link up. Dope. <laughs> ain't, ain't no question about it, man. But thank you so much for your positive energy and all the gems you had to drop for everyone today, man. And we're going to sign off, yeah. bro. So I'll see you soon. All right, bro. Appreciate it. Take care, man. Peace. All right. Too. But the turn up in Latvia, though, listen, I just know all the vodka stays cold forever. And thanks for being on the show, bro. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much for helping us get more diverse perspectives in here. When I say men of color, that's serious. So you're the first Latino brother to be on the program. And I'm proud to have you on. Hopefully you felt represented well. And it's an important part of the discussion, like real talk. So thanks again, bro. 
Y'all make sure to follow Ant on his personal Instagram account at Ant, A-N-T underscore 619. You guys are already following his other accounts, Millennials Abroad and the Melanin Travel Club. I know you guys are out here trying to post up, get put on the gram, trying to find your next travel bay. Listen, listen, the photos be looking right. Let me tell you. All right, we're getting to the end of today's session, but I did want to again shout out that we are looking for men of color to sponsor for passports. Simple four-step process. Number one. Boom, be a man of color. Number two, badoom. Follow Jerry the Third on Twitter. Number three, pew pew pew. At me and tell me what having a passport would mean to you. And number four, ka 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 ka. Put in the hashtag passpoint18. Super simple. It can't get more complicated. Dust that Twitter account off, y'all. Tap your cousin on the shoulder. Tap your nephew. Tell him to get hit. So, as always, it's been another beautiful day at Point Noir. I'm your host, Jerry the Third signing off.